In this lesson, we're talking about how plants are classified. Plants are classified into two main categories, non-vascular and vascular. The first category we're going to look at is non-vascular. But before we do that, let's look at a review of what vascular tissue is. Vascular tissue is a system of tube-like structures inside a plant through which water, minerals, and food move. If we look at the picture on the next page, these flowers have changed colors due to vascular tissue. You can see that their stems, and in, in this plant the stem has been split into two. Half of the stem is in the cup of blue water, half the stem is in the cup of red water. The stem that is in the red water has, the red water has gone through the vascular tissue, little tubes inside the stem made of xylem and phloem tissue, and the red water has gone up the left side of the stem into that side of the flower. You can see the stem on the right has done the opposite, has brought blue water up that half of the stem, and that flower has turned blue. That is all a result of vascular tissue. But not all plants have vascular tissue. So let's take a look at some examples of plants that are non-vascular plants, plants that do not have that vascular tissue. If you look in the photo here, this is moss growing on the ground and up the sides of these trees. Another example down here, this is moss growing on a rock and it has grown some reproductive structures that we'll talk about in a minute. So moss is an example of a non-vascular plant. Non-vascular plants have no cell walls, there's no roots, they're usually low growing and they live in damp, shady places. If we look at a diagram of a moss plant, a moss plant, like all non-vascular plants, the water does not pass from the roots up through all parts of the plant like it does in a plant that has vascular tissue. Instead, all parts of the plant absorb water and materials directly from their surroundings. Uh, you can see moss has a plant part um, called a rhizoid, and it kind of looks like a root, and its job, just like a root's job, is to anchor the moss in place, um, and it does absorb water and nutrients, but instead of flowing through vascular tissue up through all parts of the plant, it just passes from cell to cell. The leaf-like and stem-like structures can also absorb water and materials, though, too. Another example of a plant that it has non-vascular tissue are these things called liverworts. And they're given their name, oops, sorry about that. They're given their name based on the fact that they look like the inside of a liver. And um, just like moss, they're found growing in wet, areas, damp areas, um, areas that are shady, a lot of times along the sides of creeks and other streams and rivers, um, on rocks, they can grow right into the soil, but they look like this. They are liverworts. There are also these things called hornworts, and these are a little bit different. They do not have vascular tissue, just like the other two examples, but they're different because they don't grow on rocks or tree trunks. They're more likely to be found mixed in with um, grass. And you can see these are the little um, hornwort structures here. On page 91 in your book, go ahead and label these three boxes. You're labeling, labeling them uh, parts of the moss. Uh, look at the diagram on the left here and then uh, label these boxes and draw a line from the label to the structure. You're labeling the capsule, the stalk, 
and the leaf-like structure in these three blanks. On page 92, I want you to fill in this chart here. Um, we're summarizing the three types of nonvascular plants, mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. They've filled in mosses for you. And so what this chart is identifying is the physical characteristics of each of these. So mosses, they kind of have a fuzzy appearance. Liverworts, what, what is their appearance? What do they look like? If you could describe that here. Look in the paragraph up here, and that tells you um, what the comparison is as to what liverworts look like. Same for hornworts. Describe what they look like. Again, use the wording up here to help you. The second column, I guess third column, where these three types of nonvascular plants are found. Mosses are found in shady spots on rocks and tree trunks. Again, look at the top of the page. Where would we find liverworts? And then finally, where would we find hornworts? And just a hint, hornworts are found in a different location than the first two. Then go down to the assess your understanding. Um, if you could answer 1A, vascular tissues or rhizoids anchor moss and absorb water and nutrients. Which one is that? Circle the correct choice. 1B, and remember, you can pause this at any time to write down your answers. Why are most nonvascular plants short? I'm going to help you out on this one. Remember, we said that um, in the text, it says that nonvascular plants do not have cell walls. Cell walls are a um, second layer of plant cells that make them stronger. So most nonvascular plants are short because they don't have the extra cell wall that makes them more sturdy. So they're not as strong. They can't grow as tall. How are liverworts and hornworts different? You should be able to use the chart right above here to answer that. Um, how do they uh, look differently? And think about also how they, I'm sorry, where they grow. Um, that is also different for those two. The I get it question, you can find that answer. The bold statement on page 90 will help you answer this one. Now I know the characteristics of non-vascular plants are Finish that statement using the bold key point on page 90.